Uh, I think everybody's here. Uh, everybody here. All right. Thank y'all so much for coming. And I think on the schedule that uh, the first thing we have on the schedule is Serta and Greta and. And I think they're all under one one hat now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if you'd like to introduce this with you, and we'll get ready to go. Absolutely. Well, first of all, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the Joint Committee. Uh, my name is Chris Tomlinson. I'm the Executive Director for the State Road and Tollway Authority, as well as the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority. Um, on my left, I have Kirk Felstool, who is the Deputy Director at the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority, and on my right, um, Bert Brantley, who's the Deputy Director at the State Road and Tollway Authority. And uh, you're right, it's, it is under um, one roof, if, if you will, um, but uh, legally it's still two separate um, agencies. Um, in my comments today, though, I, I want to let you know about some of the things we're doing to sort of streamline uh, operations uh, uh, and uh, combine the two where it makes sense. Um, like Commissioner uh, Michael, uh, the changes in amended uh, FY16 for the, both agencies are relatively minor, so I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, outline what those are. Um, but really, I was hoping I'd have a chance to tell you about some of the initiatives that are underway at both agencies. So we provide you a, a combined uh, PowerPoint that you should have in front of you. Uh, for those that might not be familiar with uh, both operations, um, so the State Road and Tollway Authority is the state's centralized uh, toll operator, um, but we also serve as a um, transportation uh, financing arm and work closely with the Department of Transportation on um, their uh, bond program in terms of uh, debt service payments, and you'll see that in the budget in, in, in a moment as well as uh, we prov provide uh, work on the P3 program. Uh, so whenever we're doing projects such as uh, 285-400 or the Northwest Corridor project, uh, these multi-year uh, public-private partnerships, uh, we serve as a contracting and at times financing arm uh, for the, the Department of Transportation. Uh, if you look at the tail of the tape, though, uh, I always get asked a lot of questions about Peach Pass and the hotland on I-85. Uh, so I wanted to just give you some key stats. Uh, as I sit here today, we're uh, approaching over um, close to a half million Peach Pass transponders uh, that are out on the roadways. So again, that's not the number that had been issued and maybe are no longer uh, in use. That's the number of active transponders on uh, active accounts uh, today. Uh, there's close to 300,000 active accounts. And today on I-85, we're seeing uh, over 24,000 trips on average uh, each day. It's actually closer to 25,000 uh, right now. Um, turning uh, to Greta, uh, or the Regional Transportation Authority, uh, we are the folks that bring you uh, the express bus, so the state's um, multi-county, multi-jurisdictional uh, transit service. We run what we call uh, commuter coach uh, services, so running from uh, the vibrant bed bedroom communities are around the metro Atlanta area and into work, the work centers of either downtown, midtown, or perimeter center. Uh, today we have 166 uh, bus fleet We're running 33 routes. Um, we have uh, park and ride locations, uh, 30 of them uh, throughout the metro area, running service from 12 counties uh, into those three uh, primary work areas. But we actually draw ridership from over 40 counties. Uh, so it, it is a, in comparison to MARTA, is a, is a smaller piece of the uh, transit puzzle, but it's a critical piece. And uh, we're very proud of the uh, service that we provide. And I'll tell you more about that later as well. Chris, what's a typical fare cost? Um, typical fare, we actually have zone-based fares. Uh, so we have a $3 single ride fare um, or a $4 fare um, under the Greta system. It gets a little bit more complex. Uh, we also contract with uh, Cobb County, for example, to run some of our routes, and there the max uh, single ride fare is uh, $5. So how did I end up running uh, both agencies? Uh, if you turn to uh, slide three. Do you want to take your questions now or oh, wait till we end? No, no, I'm, I'm fine as we go. We have a couple of questions. Uh, 26, uh, I can't see. Oh, excuse me. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Madam Chair. 
Thank you, Commissioner, for all the work you do. Oh, what? How much are you receiving on your uh, Peach Pass uh, annually? How much are you collecting? So annually, <coughs> um, the Peach Pass toll revenue is approximately uh, about $9.3 million uh, this year, and it has been uh, going up uh, each year. Now, the total of 400 was about... 23 million, 22 million, something like that? That's correct. On, okay. on average, uh, Georgia 400 brought in anywhere from uh, 20 to $24 million, uh, depending on the year. Well, I was for keeping that. Of course, some legislators brought their sledgehammers to the, uh, I, won't go, I won't mention Albert's name. And um, <laughs> l let me ask you, though, you, you even see more coming, though, with your new work uh, and the DOT's work on uh, I-75, 575. Uh, right. That's correct. As I sit here today, uh, there's approximately 52 miles of additional um, managed lanes or toll facilities under construction between the Northwest Corridor running from 285 up into Cobb and Cherokee counties um, and a 12-mile reversible road in, uh, primarily in Henry County on I-75 South. And we, the contracts have been signed. Construction just hasn't kicked off on an extension of the IE-5 express lanes, which we had a, an additional 10 miles, all new capacity. Yeah, and I know it's great. Uh, it's great progress, and and I love it. And I know you got to break some eggs to make some omelets, but uh, it's awful messy. But thank you for all the work, and I commend uh, you that too, Mr. Commissioner. One more question, Madam Chair. Uh, now, if you don't have a peach pass and you have more, and you have a a high occupancy vehicle. Are you allowed to ride in those lanes? Um, on I-85, uh, well, no, you must have a Peach Pass. You must have a, a, an active Peach Pass account and the occupancy in order to ride for free. And the, oh, okay. But yeah. you can't just have a car full of people and not have the pass any longer. That's correct. You cannot do that. And what about a motorcycle that's allowed there or a bus that's allowed there? A any vehicle in the lane has okay. to have a Peach right. Pass. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Representative Mayo. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Mr. Commissioner, thank you for sharing with us. What um, Are there any areas, you talked about the uh, 40 counties you serve with bus service. I'm wondering if there's any areas where there's overwhelming demand right now, where you find there are a lot of riders and, and you see uh, an opportunity for expansion or to ad add additional buses? Um, we, we do see opportunities um, to expand. Um, one of the things we're looking at doing is adding three additional new routes uh, servicing into the perimeter area because of the explosive uh, growth in terms of uh, that serving as a job center. Um, coming from both uh, Clayton County and um, going east, uh, we have very popular ridership and we are continuing to look to see whether we need to expand service by either adding additional routes or additional service or buses to those routes. Do you think MARTA should be expanded? Do I think MARTA should be I, I think um, MARTA should be expanded um, if those counties vote to expand it. <laughs> um, I, get asked this, Good I, get asked this, I get asked this question a lot. Um, we look at our service as being complementary um, to MARTA service. Um, <coughs> We, we have the ability to go across county jurisdictional lines, and, and we've been fortunate enough to do that without a lot of controversy. As MARTA expands, so for the first time, our operations in Clayton County, uh, MARTA is now in Clayton County, we don't see it as a um, competition. If for some reason our ridership was to switch uh, to MARTA service over time, we would look at redeploying um, our assets and our services to those counties that are outside of their reach. So, so it's a, it's a, it's a, I think it's a very good um, complementary relationship right now. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, Representative Fick. Just follow up on that. Duplicative services, though, are there between MARTA and, and not, the express bus? Not really, because um, we, again, are running from counties outside of MARTA's right, jurisdiction right, and, right. and dropping people off. Okay. Uh, a lot of times within their jurisdiction. So if MARTA were expand, you guys would either back off or... Right. Uh, and, and even today, we share um, park and rides. Uh, yeah. we, okay. we don't do local service. Uh, yeah. uh, we don't have a, a paratransit service. Again, MARTA does those. Or local counties have their own um, transit for those. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Senator Beach. I'm just to follow up on Representative May. 
you not say that um, the relationships and the spirit of cooperation is, a, is it's at an all-time high between MARTA, CERTA, GDOT, Greta, everybody coming together? Absolutely. Um, it, it, it seems simple, but it, it took years to get there, but um, it's, it's about the customer first or the driver, et cetera. And, and when we focus there, um, it, it's really broken down any type of sort of um, territorial jurisdictional issues. So we're, we're working uh, together more than ever. Um, we have not only official meetings, but uh, get together um, outside of work, et cetera. So it's going great. Well, thank you for that, because I, I noticed the spirit of cooperation amongst the agencies is, is great. And thank you. thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. Any other questions? Thank you, and thank you for the job you're doing, and we appreciate you coming. Have we got any more questions? Oh, you're not through with your presentation. We interrupted you for questions, okay? All right, let's go ahead. I'll speed up this. You better stop while you're ahead. You got it. No, you told us. Well, and, and I'm happy to just take questions. The only changes in the amended 16 budget as they relate to uh, the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority is a $243 um, add to our TeamWorks budget in order to cover the paperwork uh, associated with the Affordable Care Act. Um, I, I assume there aren't any questions on that. <laughs> and, and I think we see that in, in every right. everybody's budget. We, we, uh. um, uh, switching to the Tollway Authority, um, there is a there is a, a change in the, the fund sources, and uh, Commissioner McMurray uh, touched on this in his presentation yesterday. Um, the funds that we're receiving as payments to CERTA from GDOT are shifting. It's, it's a reduction of motor fuel tax dollars um, by approximately $18.1 million, um, and an increase in general funds by the same amount, thus uh, freeing up more motor fuel money to be used directly by the department and uh, the money that we receive, um, the motor fuel and the general funds, goes to only two purposes. It goes to um, paying debt service on, on this outstanding um, either Garvey or guaranteed revenue bond debt, um, and it goes towards the uh, Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank Program. And there aren't any questions on that. The next slide, uh, I wanted to just bring you up to speed on where we are on the infrastructure bank program. So um, outside of debt service, you have what we call GTIB, and this is the fourth round. Uh, prior to the fourth round of accepting project applications, to date, approximately $55 million has been awarded uh, to projects, enabling uh, projects with a project value of approximately $200 million to proceed forward. So GTIB is a revolving loan and grant uh, program. Uh, some of the projects uh, that you may be familiar with are like the Diverging Diamond projects, um, uh, but we've done um, uh, projects uh, all around, but primarily in the metro area. So last year, uh, the General Assembly asked us to see what we could do to encourage more project applications from outside the metro area. And what you see on um, slide five, uh, we have seen a huge uptick in the number of projects coming from uh, what are called tier one and tier two counties uh, under the Department of Community Affairs, but uh, counties outside of your traditional metro areas. So as I sit here today, there are, we received uh, 49 applications uh, for the GTIP program, uh, consisting of uh, 45 grant applications, um, uh, four loan applications. In total, this actually represents 45 projects. In other words, the loans uh, came in as a combination request for loans and grants. Um, these projects are under evaluation now, but if you look to the next slide, you have a map where you can see where we've received projects from really throughout the entire state. Uh, and so we're that is under evaluation, and we expect awards uh, towards uh, June, May, June time frame. Uh, we have a question, Representative. Just real quick, those funds are used to to buy additional buses in the local communities. Is that what? No, no, it's not so, capital funds. It's it's so operating expenses. Uh, no, this this is a it is not a transit uh, program. Uh, the the fund source for that is motor fuel dollars. So it's only uh, eligible for road and bridge projects. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. But since you asked, uh, and, and, and like Commissioner Michael, I did not plant that question. If you turn to the next slide, uh, the General Assembly last year appropriated uh, $75 million in general obligation bonds uh, to be used for uh, statewide uh, transit purposes. And that money was appropriated to the State Road and Tollway Authority to administer. Uh, so what we've put together and what you see on that slide is what uh, we've uh, called the uh, GO Transit Capital Program. But these are funds that are available statewide to any transit operator uh, within the state. And the application window for this uh, new program closes at the end of uh, uh, January. Um, but we're, we are hearing from everyone from MARTA to the smallest transit operators who may only have one or two uh, vehicles in their fleet um, from around the state uh, for projects. Uh, because this is uh, state capital dollars, it can only be used um, for capital needs and not operations. Um, but what we're hearing from the transit operators, uh, they're happy to see that the state put this uh, money forward and they're getting uh, very creative to try to find worthwhile projects to put this money towards that they can hopefully quickly turn around and, and show the benefits of, of the program and what they could do with the dollars. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, th that was the question I was really kind of go to. So if I'm making transit authority or whatever needed some new buses, th this, these funds are available uh, on a need base? I mean, are they you making? Uh, we, we have them available on a competitive basis because um, we know that um, the, the needs out there might out outstrip the funding. Um, but yes, it can be used for buses provided that whatever they want to use it on, be it a bus or something else, has a useful life of at least uh, 10 years or more because that's the term of the bonds. And that's just um, uh, maintaining uh, under uh, state bond law requirements. Okay. Right. Um, you have a, a map of our current service area on slide eight. And the last thing I wanted to leave you with was to tell you about some of the changes that we're, we're instituting on the transit side in 2016. So the express service has been operating for approximately 11 years. And uh, we've taken our first top to bottom comprehensive look at the service to see what can we do to streamline it, make it more efficient, <coughs> make it easier to understand, et cetera. Um, that is, uh, and within, all within the current spend. And what you see on slide nine is we believe within our, our current spend, um, by making some alignments and, and service uh, route changes, um, we are, we're hopeful that we can roll out three additional routes. Again, to um, those would all go into the perimeter s center. We can increase the frequency of trips from uh, over half of the park and rides. Um, over 18 of our park and rides would gain more trips or more service. And um, three of the park and rides will have uh, new service routes uh, into Midtown. So hopefully we're, we're able to do all this just through making some uh, changes such as instead of running a route from one park and ride into town uh, we may interline service uh, we'll hit more than one park and ride on the way home but people can uh, catch a bus every 15 minutes instead of every 30 minutes um, and to the question about marta we're we're looking at where we link into marta um, believe it or not the five point station isn't always the the best uh, place uh, for us to link into, whereas the Civic Center is only more straighter alignment. So we're doing those type of things and coordinating closely with MARTA. And on the last page, we're trying to um, improve some of the customer amenities to try to attract more people onto the service. So in 2016, we plan to roll out free public Wi-Fi. Our average trip is 26 miles long. We think that's an amenity that hopefully can attract the additional ridership or be helpful for the ridership that we have, as well as uh, rolling out what we call Find My Bus technology. But uh, on a day like this, you'll be able to look on the web or a mobile app to see if your bus has been stuck in traffic, et cetera. All of this is what we're doing today, but all of this uh, is really sets us up for the plans that the governor announced for expanding the express lane uh, uh, system. 
because these routes will utilize those corridors. And what we've already noticed is that some of our most consistent and reliable uh, run times are on those routes that use the I-85 hot lanes. So, but with that, uh, I'm happy to take any other questions. Uh, we have another question. Uh, who, uh, Senator, Senator. Do you all go to the airport? We do not go to the airport today. That is uh, so something that in our strategic plans that we like to pursue. And uh, I'll, I'll say this, it, it would come at an increased operational cost, um, but it's something that we, we hear a lot of interest in. Um, and believe it or not, it's not necessarily for the business travelers. That's almost a side benefit. We, if we ran to the airport, we'd probably be looking at a service that ran 20 hours a day so we could accommodate the shift workers, um, especially those um, who might make less than uh, in some of these blue collar jobs. And at the same time, what we would do for Miguel Southwell and his operation is really expand the talent pool. Because right now, if you don't have a car, the, the, the likely uh, airport worker lives only in the city of Atlanta because of the MARTA rail service. <coughs> we would uh, look at providing service from Gwinnett, uh, Cobb, uh, Douglas, um, south of the city uh, uh, into the airport. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Mayo. I'm sorry, Madam, I didn't have a question. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Representative Townsend. Sorry. I, I may have missed this, um, but when will the uh, GTIB fourth round applications uh, or the <coughs> will be s selected? When will they be selected? Uh, May or, or June of this year. But it will it, will it be all these where you've had an application or just an, a certain number? Um, it, it depends how far the, the funding stretches. Uh, this year, for this one, we have $29 million in available funding. Um, what we end up doing is um, there's a, a evaluation team made up of multiple agencies as well as representation from the um, Georgia Municipal Association, Association of uh, City and County Governments, and they tend to try to keep awarding um, till they either run out of money or there's a very distinct break in, in sort of the, either the quality or the readiness usually of the projects. Thank you. That's good information. Thank you. Uh, Representative Pig. Sorry, I'm just No, no problem. Just, um, just a more philosophical question maybe you could answer. You know, we've been debating rail systems, you know, from Atlanta to Macon, Atlanta to Athens, whatever. It seems like you guys are doing a great job of broadening the base, making it user-friendly with Wi-Fi, and it stops every 15 minutes. It, could we accomplish what we're trying to do with rail potential, what people, some people want us to do with a rail system at a lot more efficient cost to the taxpayers with just an expansion of where you are now, is that a fair question to ask you, uh, it's, it's or a, maybe to the commissioner? It's a fair maybe but tough be question. One, but. No, it, it, I think it's a perfectly fair question. Uh, in in many instances, um, yes, you can do a more efficient service um, with um, bus, and when you combine it with the managed lanes, uh, uh, this concept called bus rapid transit mm -hmm. um, is possible. Uh, that being said. Uh, I think there are certain areas where looking at rail, because of the heavy amount of congestion, uh, rail expansion uh, makes sense and there's, there's heavy demand for it. So uh, I, full disclosure, I also sit on the MARTA board. Um, and so there's three um, rail extension projects that uh, MARTA is looking at. And I think uh, when you look at what can be done with rail on those versus bus, it, there, there becomes sort of an interesting, um, it's an interesting discussion to see should it be one, the other, or is it mm -hmm. phases, which, which actually, uh, it, it never gets in the media, but for some of their projects, that's actually the plan. Like on I-20, the first phase would be bus rapid transit, and then they want to phase to rail. Um, okay. but, but with the, the uh, Georgia 400, for example, uh, there's probably a, a need for both. It's the question of whether there's um, funding and space for both. Well, the, the question always has been on this high-speed rail is, you know, the, 
sure you could get the money to build it probably with federal dollars, but but somebody's got to fund the maintenance operation. And that's always been the the real barrier, and so um, it seems like maybe an infrastructure that's already set up. May, and, I, and I'm from Macon, so I, I mean I'm, I'm interested in more of. of it, of that so but um, but and, and and unfortunately for us uh, Macon would be out of uh, Greta's jurisdiction so right. one thing I should have pointed out with Greta we have a um, 12 uh, excuse me 13 county jurisdiction around the area CERTA's uh, statewide but we, we do coordinate and um, talk with people and I'm well aware of some of the um, Commuter yeah. rail, yeah. and high speed rail. I just think projects. it may be an op okay. Well, maybe just expand it a little bit. You know, expand the reach just a little bit longer, and you know, I mean, it, and the infrastructure is already there. So anyway, right. just food for thought. Thank you. Do we have any other questions? Well, once again, thank you for the job you're doing, and thank you for coming. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now the big one. Uh, DOT. <clears throat> Page two hundred in your book, if you'd like to follow along in the book. Thank you, Commissioner. Would you like to introduce the, the, the young man to well, you? <laughs> thank you, Chairman, and uh, ladies and gentlemen of the Joint Committee. Uh, there are some things that need no, no introduction, but I will introduce our team. Of course, uh, let me start with the most important person. This is our Treasurer, Angela Whitworth. She's the one you need to know. She, she does all the heavy lifting and all the work behind the scenes to get us to this point in her staff, and of course, the man who needs no introductions, Jay Roberts, your planning director, <laughs> great team member, and we're having a lot of good times uh, working forward. But two people that are not here that plan to be here is our chief engineer, Meg Perkle, a deputy commissioner, Mike Dover. Somebody's back at the shop taking care of snow and ice in the north part of the state. And just a brief update, we had over 100 people out last night uh, pre-treating the roads with Brian. Uh, we're actually actually sitting here. I got a few little text updates of freezing temperatures now on our pavement sensors up in uh, Chairman Gucci's part of the world and uh, uh, also up in Gordon County, but we've pre-treated uh, We're watching that and also we've got our eyes on a little bit of winter weather coming in late Friday night early Saturday morning so uh, The men and women are GDOT out in force uh, taking care of business and hopefully we keep people from slipping and sliding around up in the north part of the state so yeah, I, say it's, it, well, I was looking for you. It's getting a little, a little cold in your neck of the woods too. So the main concentration from the the uh, 11 o'clock update is looks like in the Blairsville area, uh, up in that such as area, not far from where where you hail out of, Chairman. So anyway, but with that, I start. I've got a handout. If you, the second slide is the thank you and transformational slide, and I cannot come before uh, the legislature without again saying thank you for the support of the transportation funding after 2015. In my opinion, it is truly transformational. I've said this before, I'll say it again. I think it's probably the single most important infrastructure vote this legislative body has ever taken. Uh, and I think it will pay dividends. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, let me correct that. I don't think, I know it will pay dividends for the state of Georgia today and in the future. And I think part of that was demonstrated last week at the press conference. Uh, held with the governor, the speaker, and lieutenant governor of outlining what the future looks like with those substantial investments in maintenance, in bridges, our taking care of our infrastructure the way it needs to be taken care of, and also taking the balanced approach for mobility improvements for freight and people mobility, a part of the discussion just had about mobility in the metro area. So if you flip over to the next uh, sheet, uh, we'll just take a little historical look of what collections, uh, motor fuel collections have looked like over time since fiscal year 08. And looking at the positive effects of Tr Transportation Funding Act of 2015 and fiscal year 16, of which totals uh, $1.78 billion. Uh, $1.6 billion of 
excise and fee components uh, totaling about 154 million. Just again to give a little historical perspective of what the budgets had looked like and as you can see it sort of ticked up and down over time right around a billion or less and uh, based on uh, what we've seen so this is very positive and also based on what's going on with the fuel prices today and uh, since July 1 uh, if this had change had not been in place we would have declining revenue so uh, again we don't need to don't need to lose sight of if we'd stayed status quo where we would lost would have lost ground the next sheet I just wanted to reemphasize what the amended budget's going to do for Georgia and this pie chart is a simple breakdown of showing what's left to be done between now and June and you can see that the blue side of the graph sort of the left side of the graph represents bridge replacements capital maintenance uh, contracts which is resurfacing and routine maintenance contracts uh, which is new and I'll talk about a little bit about that later but that leaves us from now through June with over a billion dollars of contracting going out to to Georgia contractors to make an infrastructure improvement in all these categories seen here and this is a mix of federal and state but I just want to give you a little perspective generally our contracts are about a bit we do about a billion a year and now we've had three starts and stops with federal government that's that's behind us now this this physical year but generally we do about a billion we have a billion to do between now and June we'll, we'll end up the year over 1.5 billion dollars uh, for contracts uh, so that's that's big and that does not include design or right away environmental uh, that represents a 66 percent investment in our existing assets of bridges and roadways and taking care of maintenance the next page is a bar chart it shows the FY16 amended budget the green represents where the amended budget dollars are going to be utilized so let me walk you through that uh, the bait the base budget uh, of FY16 was 1.003 billion which was derived from the uh, previous uh, previous uh, makeup of uh, sales tax and excise tax uh, the now the estimate for excise is 1.605 billion dollars which is an additional 600 million dollars over the base the fee component totals a total of 156 million dollars uh, which also includes 1.2 million dollars of the jet fuel exemption and so that when you total all those together you get a, a total amended budget of 1.78 million dollars uh, can i interrupt Billions, you for a question me. right yes. now when you mentioned the jet fuel extension yesterday i asked a question we only show 1.2 million and when we were talking about this exemption i thought it was going to be more than that what what happened was i the only person that thought it was going to be more than that no you're uh i think the I think the actual exemption will equate more to that but this is what's being brought forward from state general funds to to the budget so I think once it's recognized over the entire year we'll see what that number looks like once revenue gets that full recognition of what that exemption looks like so uh, it was uh, projected to be higher than that uh, and but this is how much was uh, came forward from the uh, budget to move forward into the intermodal program <coughs> So the rest of it's still in the general fund, is that what you're That's saying? That's correct. And how much was the total? I believe that was about 12 to $13 million. We thought it was going to be 20 to 30 Oh, excuse million. me, yes, 20. Yeah. Around 20. But you're only seeing how much in this? 1.2. 1, 1, 1. 1.2 additional. It's totals of 12. So let's let's make sure that's not an additional. There's a total of 12 recognized that comes from the general fund. I was thinking it was $30 million, James. That, yeah, it was that's somewhere between that range, yeah. Okay. So maybe in 17 budget we'll see the full we're well, for the okay so amend it amend it 17 hopefully would be a be a fully recognized because it's not in the amended budget in the the 17 budget's That's the right. same again again we you know six months of collections or six months of recognition at this point under our belt okay so so the state it's putting all the jet fuel we aren't putting any money in airport aid except that well we put the jet fuel so they put 10 million of that plus 1.2 million of jet it's, fuel it's, it's all that jet a, it's actually the total uh, airport aid gets to about 13 million total okay uh, is it and and that's all jet fuel that's correct okay thank so you they recognized they recognized that amount okay which is still a little bit short of what was anticipated okay thank you you're welcome 
Uh, just sort of hit the major, the green, again, the green was the addition, and just sort of hit this high level. Capital projects is the first column there. It totals uh, $700 million, a little over $700 million. Uh, that's, again, on page 200 of your budget. Uh, that's broken into really two components, uh, $684 million for capital construction, uh, $99.6 million for capital maintenance. What that does is sort of what that pie chart showed you. That completes 50 bridge replacements, uh, resurfacing 137 additional projects. It's 90 projects for uh, intersection and safety upgrades, and 14 roadway projects. And again, that's, that's a combination of state and federal to deliver that amount of projects over the next six months. So it's, uh, it's really big, uh, a big shot in the arm, if you will. And uh, we'll apologize in advance because there's going to be cones and barrels out everywhere uh, in the spring. So uh, just forward those calls to us. Um, in general operations, the next column over, you can't see any green, but they're called because there's such a small uh, change there. We have a net change of $1.5 million in the general operations category. General operations cover all our operations, construction, administration, uh, which is design, right away, uh, environmental. Uh, our general operations, uh, EEO, IT administration, all those things. So we have a small 1.5 net increase there. Uh, we achieved that by a uh, uh, we achieved that by fund source distribution out of the, the data collections program and the planning program of 1.75 million. So that leaves a net change of 1.5 million. And the reason for that net change is we are now increasing our state funded program with recognition of 20 TFA 2015 dollars, whereas prior to our total program was federal. So we had a lot of federal match dollars that helped. To offset those costs so now we have to pay for our work with state dollars so that's what that small change is in the general operations category next category over uh, I believe is LMIG make sure I didn't skip yep LMIG I'm very excited about this one to see at recognition at 10% of the excise uh, fee uh, goes toward LMIG additional 36 million dollars and uh, I'm very excited about this because we're going to deploy these dollars to the cities and the counties for safety projects, for striping, reflectors, signs, guardrails, or safety needs. This last year, we ended up the year with my button here, Drive Alert Arrive Alive, with over 220 more fatalities on Georgia roadways than we did in the prior year, a 17% increase. And so we like to deploy these dollars back to local governments uh, to take on their safety needs. In fiscal year 17, we'll go back, uh, when we get, I know we're not talking about that today, but that'll just go back to the basically formula-based uh, budget. And also, so you're aware, in amended budget years, we've never had the ability to really amend LMIG. Mm -hmm. So this is a really uh, uh, a great opportunity to take on the safety needs <coughs> around the state. <coughs> Uh, next is routine what, maintenance. Okay. How, how are you going to roll Can that I turn back this out off? to the local governments? We, we will uh, basically put out a call and uh, contact all the cities and all the counties and, and need your help, too, to, to message that out there. But we certainly will reach out just the way we do when we do an annual call for LMIG. Strictly They'll submit by, their projects. Strictly and, by formula? No, not by formula. By, by need and request. <laughs> right. And we actually will use data as well to help guide the cities and the counties based on fatality locations and crash hot spots to use a little bit of science behind it as well and try to try to mesh those two together so we can make a big impact. Uh, thank you, Chair. Representative, I mean, excuse Greg me, Harden? Senator. All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Commissioners, <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for all you do. <laughs> hey, uh, this is uh, regarding locals, but a little different. Uh, part of House Bill 170 had the T in it. Do you know of any County governments that are looking at uh, implementing that or putting it on, are you? Abs absolutely. We've got sort of middle Georgia looking at the whole region. Really? Uh, and so, and obviously counties, there's conversations going on in counties now. Obviously the biggest probably is here in Fulton County. Could have a big, could have a big. That'd be, a, that'd be huge. That's Does that huge. happen on top of that? Yeah. So yeah Georgia's going on about, well, seven out of the 11 counties passed. Yeah. Passed, so they're moving forward. That's, the whole region. that's great. Thank you. Has a big Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Tommy. For Any other questions? <coughs> Last uh, was routine maintenance. So you see the next big green ad. That's additional two hundred additional two hundred million dollars for what we call routine maintenance, which is really preventative maintenance. This comes in the form of contracts of which we don't currently contract for. 
And these come, I think, as a fantastic opportunity for small business and minority business <laughs> opportunities to do things like sealing the cracks on the road, repairing potholes, cleaning out drains, replacing drain pipes, cleaning ditches out, mowing the grass, picking up litter, trimming trees back so you can see signs, trimming trees back so they're not hanging over the road and tonight they break and fall in the road when they get a little ice on them. So all kind of opportunities of which we currently do ourselves, but now, and we have such a backlog of work, this gives an opportunity for the private sector to do that, that we can contract for this. And my, my favorite little saying, and I mentioned it yesterday, a dollar preventive, a dollar preventive maintenance on pavements saves you $4 in resurfacing cost and $6 of rehabilitation cost later. So if you can do these preventative things and you can keep the road sealed and, and filled, uh, keep the water out, then you save and buy a lot of time that pays dividends on the, on the tail end. Again, we're going to uh, administer this through, a, uh, through the DOAS web, web uh, site. So this is a very simplified on-demand services kind of opportunity so that contractors can get uh, pre-qualified, very simple process. <laughs> and when there's a need for a road to be uh, patched, uh, email blast goes out to all the contractors that have been pre-qualified and they can submit a bid in a very streamlined process. So trying to deploy these dollars very quickly is a real benefit to our district offices so that when they have maintenance needs, they can go out and get a contract uh, to do those works. Now, our men and women of DOT still have plenty to do. Don't, don't worry. They will not be the Maytag repairman. They've got plenty to do. <laughs> So uh, the last two categories, again, show no uh, change. And Chris uh, Tomlinson uh, uh, from uh, Lacerda, Greta just went over those. That was in the pavement to Lacerda in the geo debt uh, category. So if you flip over, the next is intermodal. We've already touched on that a little bit about the uh, uh, amended $1.23 million into the airport aid. Airport aid is uh, state journal fund does total $12.9 million. Uh, interesting to note, the state funded part of the intermodal program leverages about $67 million of federal dollars. So again, those dollars are uh, especially, in the, uh, especially in the aviation uh, program, in the transit program, uh, is, uh, is where those are really leveraged to the greatest extent. And of course, we have rail and ports and waterways. And just a brief mention while I have you as an audience is uh, the SHEP project's going well. I gave a report on that yesterday. Uh, we have work going on for mitigation, buying property for mitigation, and we have a dissolved oxygen uh, project underway. We have an impoundment area where water has to be impounded while the dredging is going on. That's under contract. Uh, we've had the uh, CSS Georgia uh, artifacts being raised from that. Some 13,000 pieces have been recovered. And so there's a lot of back work going on beside the dredging that's going on with GPA out in the bar channel now. So just to keep you in tune with that very critical project. Uh, so that concludes intermodal. And uh, I thank you for your favorable consideration, Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen of the Joint Committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you. We have some questions. Okay. Uh, um, Ms. 24, Senator. That's me. Oh, that's you. Okay. I can't tell where you are. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. And I uh, wanted to ask you about um, an issue I've received several emails about from one of my constituents. And I just want to tr try to get some um, clarity on this so I can relay that back to them. But I-20 East and West, uh, do you know <coughs> when the paving is scheduled to be completed? What I've heard is that it was scheduled for January and then pushed back to spring, and then in spring they were told it was going to be moved to summer. I don't know if you're familiar with I-20 between DeKalb and uh, somewhere in, in uh, downtown Atlanta or near Spring Street. The, uh, the project was actually, uh, it was bid, and we did not accept the bids. It was rebid and combined with another project, and that was done back in September of October. So that work should be underway in the spring. I hate to say spring again, but... Uh, so we, we had a start and a stop, uh, but now we actually combined two projects, and one of those projects includes uh, uh, some operational improvements. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Representative Dudgeon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner, a uh, question for you. With the, the big increase of money, both in capital and maintenance, um, are you having a hard time finding enough contractors to take the projects are you talking about bringing in some non-traditional ones yesterday with the like a driveway contractor to like patch a road just curious are you is is the supply of available transportation contractors enough 
to meet all this uh, new stuff we've got in. We, we certainly have been in contact and constant communication with Georgia Highway contractors as they as they see this now. And, and I, I'll tell you, with the federal piece in place and now with the Transportation Funding Act 2015, which is sustainable. I mean, that was the wonderful part of this bill was it's sustainable that you know that you have revenue and it's got the indexes in there. They now have confidence to know that they can start growing their businesses back because they, as well as everybody else in the economic downturn, mm -hmm. labor went, ar went mm -hmm. away. So labor has to grow back. Mm -hmm. uh, did we see pr probably some challenges initially? We are going to be resurfacing 3,500 mm -hmm. miles. Mm -hmm. uh, fiscal year 17, there's like 334 resurfacing projects along. Mm -hmm. So I think there will be a little strain, but everybody's poised to grow along mm -hmm. with this opportunity. And again, I think it gives us some opportunity too to grow in our technical schools uh, mm -hmm. for good jobs. You know, these are good jobs. Uh, I can tell you that uh, Georgia Highway contractors plan on doing some marketing and outreach to let people know what great jobs mm -hmm. these are, well-paid, you know, well-paying jobs right here in your community. So we're going to support them okay. in that. So I think you'll see a little strain, but overall, I think things will, uh, I think things will continue to grow and that's great for the economy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, thank you, and thank y'all for the job y'all are doing. I think everybody is just real pleased with the outcome and, and everything you're doing, and, and so and our new planning director is just right on top of things. <laughs> I know <there's> a planning director. <laughs> we cut his budget. That was. Some I thought that was appropriate. So he worked the planning department, got a $750,000. He did. Is that his salary for one year? What? Your salary, your salary reduced $750,000 for the amended budget? Yeah. You make the I same, just give that up. We cut it in half. Yeah, you're, I give you're it a great up. American. Yeah. Yeah. You make the same you were as a legislator. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your support. Uh, Department of Community Affairs. Bye. See you later. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> you, huh? All right, you want to take over? No. Huh? You're right, Artie. All right, Artie. Have it run. Like chairing a joint committee? Yes. Joint. Joint. Hey, guys. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Make sure that's Let's make sure we do. Is everybody? I don't see any of my guys here. Well, the. Are we a little early? No, we're two minutes early, I think. It's all right. Okay, we're going to get started. Thank you, Commissioner, uh, for being here today. And uh, would you like to introduce everybody that's with us? And last year you didn't get to present, did you? I did. It was, I think, my fourth or fifth day. Was it day your fourth or fifth day sure. job? So okay. <laughs> I knew it was somebody. I think it was. Uh, uh, Commissioner Corbett that said that she didn't get present. I'm sorry. I, I knew it was one of you yesterday that didn't present the year before. Sorry. She's a lot less smaller than just one person, too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> a lot smaller. Just me this time. <laughs> just, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. Um, this is John Ellis, our Chief Financial Officer and Deputy Commissioner for Finance and Administration. Um, if it's okay, I'd like to present a few things. Or yes, please. Okay. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you today and want to start by just giving you an overview of the agency and how we serve citizens of Georgia. Did, um, what, what, just a minute. They want to know what page your budget's on before we start. I'm sorry. 71. Okay. So, and we'll, I'll try not to interrupt you except for questions. Okay. <laughs> okay we can start over again. On page 71. All right. Go okay. ahead. DCA is an agency of about 400 employees. We have an annual budget of close to $270 million. The largest share of our budget, 72%, comes from the federal government, while state funds make up 22% of our funding. <coughs> the remaining 6% comes from other funding sources, including the Georgia Housing and Finance Authority. Out of the $58 million DCA receives from the state, 81% or $47 million is passed through to local communities in the, forms, in the form of grants or loans. Another 11% is used to fund program operations, and the remaining 8% is spent to match federal dollars. 
DCA uses a little over $4 million in state funds to leverage $69 million in federal funds that are used to assist communities throughout the state. DCA uses all of these public funds to fulfill our mission of partnering with communities to create a climate of success for families and businesses, and we do this in two primary ways, through community and economic development and the financing of safe and affordable housing. In the area of community and economic development, we partner very closely with our colleagues at the Department of Economic Development to help bring quality jobs to Georgia communities. The two main programs involved in this process are the Regional Economic Business Assistance Program, known as REBA, and One Georgia's EDGE program. The REBA program provides critical incentive funding leveraged by private investment to grow Georgia's business landscape with new and expanding companies uh, such as TASQ Technology in Marietta where a $624,000 award leveraged 382 new jobs, or General Motors in Roswell, where a $2.5 million award leveraged 1,000 new jobs. One Georgia's EDGE program has provided $78.6 million in funding for 54 projects over the past five years. Combined, these projects have generated almost 18,000 jobs and provided significant economic impact to communities across the state, including projects like Valmyra Glass in Dublin and engineered flooring in Murray County. In addition to financing economic development activities, DCA is also active in community development, which involves preparing communities so they'll be ready when economic development proposals or prospects are considering located in, in their community. One Georgia's equity program is active in this area, and equity has funded 79 projects, totaling $43 million over the past five years, to prepare regions across the state for economic growth through the financing of infrastructure improvements, acquisition of land for the development of industrial parks, and the construction of capital assets. Examples of the <coughs> recent equity projects include a $500,000 grant to assist with street and drainage improvements to benefit premium peanut in Coffee County, creating 100 new jobs, and it's a $48 million capital investment, as well as a $500,000 grant to assist with the site preparation for the Murray County Inland Port development. Another one of our flagship programs in the area of community and economic development is the Community Development Block Grant. We call it CDBG. Um, that, that program primarily helps cities and counties with their infrastructure needs. In fiscal year 15, CDBG made awards totaling $36.9 million to 78 communities throughout Georgia to help fund important projects, including water and sewer improvements, the construction of community facilities, and to invest in economic development <coughs> projects that are creating 640 jobs and close to $200 million in private investment. DCA also serves as the state housing agency and administers the programs of the Georgia Housing Finance Authority. A critical component for building strong communities is ensuring that there is decent, safe, and affordable housing available and that workforce housing exists in, in a town where an employer might want to locate. Most recently, DCA awarded $25.8 million in federal housing tax credits to construct or rehabilitate 33 affordable rental housing properties located throughout the state. The developments include affordable housing for working families, housing for seniors, and housing for persons with disabilities. The estimated economic impact in the initial year of this year's tax credit award includes more than $280 million in local income, over $52.8 million in local government revenue, and nearly 3,900 jobs from construction <coughs> expenditures. The awards also spur over 1,000 ongoing local jobs each year. DCA's Georgia Dream Homeownership Program, funded by our Mortgage Revenue Bond Program, made first-time home ownership possible for over 1,100 Georgia families in fiscal year 15. Typical Georgia Dream home buyers work in professions such as education, public safety, and health care. Their average annual incomes are $48,000. Average purchase prices of homes are $120,000 they live in both rural and urban areas of Georgia. Serving as the state's housing agency also means helping address the issue of homelessness. In fiscal year 15, DCA used the $2.9 million 
in state appropriated funds to help finance the sheltering of over 13,000 people, including more than 4,000 children and 650 veterans through our emergency shelter projects. Additionally, the percentage of those individuals and families who exited these shelter projects and moved into permanent housing is more than double that of other communities across the country. We're about 34% here in Georgia compared to a national average of about 16%. Prevention is another aspect of the work DCA does to address the issue of homelessness. And in fiscal year 15, the funding that DCA provided to agencies throughout the state held helped 750 individuals avoid homelessness, and of those, about 90% will be stably housed one year after assistance. We are proud of the work that DCA does to support strong communities around the state, and we appreciate the support and resources that we've received from the General Assembly. In terms of our budget request for amended fiscal year 16, I wanted to address two areas where the governor has recommended increased funding for One Georgia. The first is an addition of $14.9 million to support the Governor's Connections for Classrooms program that ensures Georgia's schools and classrooms have the high-speed broadband, broadband access required for digital learning. DCA has partnered with the Governor's Office of Student Achievement to administer those funds to local school, school systems on a competitive basis. To date, the program has provided more than $70 million in grants to 157 local education authorities, enabling them to be eligible for up to $110 million in federal funds that are focused on building out school level infrastructure, network infrastructure. The additional funding recommended by the governor will allow the governor's office of student achievement to fund another $6.9 million in local needs that could leverage another $19.9 million in federal funding. In addition to the funds needed to take advantage of available federal funds, that amount will also support competitive grants to schools for the purchase of laptops and tablets needed for digital learning. The second request is uh, one for $3.5 million for the construction of a seawall on Hutchison Island in Savannah. This project would extend the public Hutchison Island Riverwalk and add a connection to the Savannah International Trade and Convention Center, which is managed by the Georgia World Congress Center. This project is projected to generate $12 million annually in public revenue from property tax, sales tax, and hotel motel <coughs> tax revenue. I'll be happy to take any questions you have about these enhancements or the overall work at DCA. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you all for being with us. My question is in relation to the hardest hit fund provided by TARP that allowed us to redirect some of those dollars to support initiatives that would address blight in some communities around parts of the state, including Metro Atlanta and Macon, Representative Peak and Columbus. And I'm told that um, so far of the $300 million available that expires and will no longer be available after 2017, of that $300 million, we've already spent, only spent $100 million. And I'm wondering, I'd, I'd like to hear your um, thoughts and, and position on how we're going to use that money for blight. And uh, what I've heard is that most of those dollars have been used to support down payment assistance for housing. And I'm just concerned that we're not going to spend the money based on the uh, burn rate uh, we've experienced thus far. And uh, my question is, do you have any plan to uh, use it for blight? So we, the, the most recent numbers, we have a little uh, under $130 million left, so we need to get you some updated numbers. We're burning about $2.5 million a month, I believe. Um, and our primary focus has been to work with individual homeowners to prevent them from foreclosure. We are committed to spending that money, the balance of what we have prior to the end of uh, 2017, as you know, that's when the program expires. Um, and we do that either by getting them caught up on their mortgage, um, if they had a loss of a job or a death of a spouse and got behind, could it make a payment, or by making a, a lump sum payment to lower their mortgage balance so that they then refinance at a more affordable rate. Um, at this point, we don't do blight. In, in that program, we have been focused on working more with individual homeowner, homeowners, um, but certainly if we, we were monitoring monthly and if we think that we're not going to be able to utilize all the funds, 
working with the homeowners, then of course we want to look at other options for how we might be able to work through all that money with the understanding that we do want to mm -hmm. make use of all those resources. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Representative Dudgeon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, comment and a question. So um, I'm really happy to see the governors continuing on the mode of the technology grants to go. So we've got bandwidth now to all the systems, and this next round of grants is going to allow us to really get that access into the classroom and likes of leveraging federal money. And as far as a bang for buck investment, I think it's great for the states. That's my one comment. Now, secondly, just for my education, I'm not as familiar with the housing programs that we do here in the state. It looks like you talked more on the front end as far as tax credits for building certain facilities. Do we provide ongoing subsidies for renters, or is it more just enabling low-cost um, capital on the front end? I guess uh, wasn't really sure where we were spending that money. Right. The tax credit allows the rent to be given at a below market value, but mm -hmm. the the rental subsidies that we do are a separate program. The Section 8 rental vouchers would be different. Um, than people that live in the tax credit properties. So for the Section 8 vouchers that we're just basically administering the federal program right. there, that's not state money, is that right. correct? That's federal Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Now, I think uh, we had one Georgia, but I think you covered I the I kind of collapsed on Collapsed that, it. Okay. Uh, I, I think, I, any, any questions on one Georgia? That was, awesome. that was on the schedule, too. Yeah. But thank you. I think we're running a little ahead of time, which is good, and we appreciate the job you're doing, and thank, thank you for you. coming. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. We're just moving right along. I love we? it. <laughs> Economic development. Hey, before we get there. Let, let oh, wait, just a minute. Okay. Okay, then come on down. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just like to introduce my new analyst for the Senate Budget Office with for Economic Development, Austin Trot. And Austin worked for who'd you work for last year? Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, everybody likes to <laughs> meet uh, Austin. He's a be a great asset for us. Thank you, Austin. And uh, I think all y'all know Tracy. She's been around the block a few times. <laughs> and we should have depend on her, too. <laughs> uh -huh. Here we go. We just, we just pass them down. Okay. Chuck. Take one down, pass it around. Pretty picture you took to me. Thank you. Uh, and and I, I do want to point out, I, I, I appreciate you putting Chaparral Boats far on the cover. Chaparral Boats. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, Commissioner, uh, thank you so much for coming, and would you like to introduce us with you? Absolutely. I have John Moff Moffitt with us. He's our CFO, and we want to thank you all, uh, committee members, for having us here today. Uh, and Madam Chair, Senator Mullis, uh, Chairman Mullis, if, if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to just take a minute to uh, give a brief update on the department and then talk about the, the one change that we have uh, in the amended bu budget, if that's all right with you. You have just received the uh, 2015 year in review, and, and it really does a great job. Our marketing folks have done a great job of, of, of talking about the impact that we have had uh, over 2015 as a result of partnerships and the help of uh, of the Georgia General Assembly and so many folks in the community. One thing I do want to point out is the map on page two or three. If you wouldn't mind taking a look at that, what we have done is we went through in the eight major divisions that we have in the department and we asked our team to go through and say, all right, if there has been any contact, any touch with a, a company, with a community organization, whatever it may be in, in each county, please identify that. And as you've seen, we've truly had a statewide reach uh, in our department, and we're very proud of that. But it truly is because of the partnerships that we have, and we talk about economic development being a partnership in the state, and, and this truly is an example of it. But I want to point that out, and as you look through the uh, uh, year in review, if you have any questions, by all means, we'd be more than happy uh, to answer those for you. <coughs> Very briefly, Global Commerce had a great year last year. We created 26, or we worked with companies who created 26,951 new jobs and generated $4.75 billion worth of investment. And as we typically do, uh, we take care of Georgia business first. So, so uh, <clears throat> existing industry was key for us last year. Uh, three quarters of the total economic development announcements 
that's 244 out of 329, uh, were through our existing industry team, taking care of Georgia business. These companies produce 75% of our overall investment and 63% of the total jobs created. The key industries that we saw last year uh, that were creating jobs were headquarters moves, software and technology, aerospace, food processing, expansions, and relocations. Uh, and we also have a great international relations team that we created a couple of years ago, and they have been extremely helpful to us both as we do missions overseas, but also as we have companies uh, and we have dignitaries come to our state. Uh, we also have a very vibrant consular corps uh, in the state of Georgia and in Atlanta. We have 25 consuls general, we have 43 honorary consuls, and 29 binational chambers of commerce, all of which provide us opportunities from an economic development standpoint. And our international relations team does a great job coordinating uh, and being a liaison with, the, with, with them. International trade, fifth consecutive year. We had a record-setting year in international trade. Uh, we are now the 11th largest exporting state. Uh, we, uh, to break the, the numbers down a little bit, 943 Georgia companies received our customized export services from our trade team. And I want to point out, Coca-Cola does not need us. UPS is doing just fine. It's small and mid-sized Georgia companies that really need what we have to offer. And again, we're, because of the support that you give us, we get to do that free of charge using our 12 offices around the world to find new markets and new customers uh, overseas. Uh, and together, these companies, uh, these Georgia products reached 123 different countries. Uh, centers of innovation are also a way that we can work with small and mid-sized firms, leveraging the assets that we have in the university system. Uh, our six centers, just to remind the committee, are aerospace, agribusiness, energy technology, information technology, logistics, and manufacturing. And in uh, 2015, our centers uh, collaborated with 1,610 Georgia companies to provide some assistance. We also continue have workforce in our division, and that was a great strategic move by the governor. Uh, we can show companies that we're not just interested in landing a project. We're going to help uh, uh, invest in the number one issue that every company and every industry has, and that's <coughs> workforce. So to be able to have the workforce division has been fantastic. 19,345 Georgians took advantage of our uh, programs in FY15. To remind you, the High Demand Career Initiative is a partnership with us, the university system, and technical colleges to ask companies to look five and ten years down the line, say what skills do you need, what degrees, what can we do to help and to partner with you, and that's been uh, tremendously success, uh, successful. Operation Workforce works with our veterans. In FY15, we relaunched OperationWorkforce.com, and the site now features 5,000 active veteran profiles, more than 900 registered Georgia employers, and more than 500 job openings. And we also have Go Build Georgia, which is critically important to get into high schools to talk about skilled trades and the way that we can uh, work uh, with students, with parents, with principals, guidance counselors, to show that there are some great trades and some great skill opportunities uh, with Georgia businesses there as well. Tourism continues to be a vital driver in our state. Uh, almost every community in Georgia uh, is impacted in one way or another. In 2014, or 2015, it was another uh, record-breaking year for the tourism industry, uh, generating $57.1 billion worth of economic impact. That was up 6.7%. Uh, our 11 state visitor information centers greeted more than 12.2 million visitors last year, and our tourism team met with 453 communities and 422 businesses uh, in FY15. Also, because of uh, your support last year in providing $750,000 uh, in our, our tour for tourism marketing, we will be on television for the first time in 10 years in April and in May, the key time when folks are making decisions about summer vacation. We're going to be in the Birmingham market, the Jacksonville market, also the Greenville, Spartanburg, Charlotte market. So that uh, is very exciting for us, and we greatly appreciate uh, your support there. Entertainment. Yeah. We have a question. Yes. yes. Thank you again for what you're doing. How are we compared to our surrounding states and our money for marketing? Uh, there is uh, there is no doubt that some of our other states have done a lot of investment recently, Senator, and, and, and we compete oftentimes with – Tennessee and South Carolina and North Carolina, and there has been a, 
a tremendous amount of investment that those states have made. Uh, I, yeah, since I but they usually spend more money marketing their state than we do. They do, they do, and and uh, and and oftentimes, uh, <coughs> uh, you, you, folks have seen the television ads and that sort of thing. And so we're we're hopeful that uh, again now because of your support, we've we'll be able to be on television. Well, I don't want to hear anything from Senator again, but the Tennessee uh, tourism commercial uses a swing along bridge from Rock City that is in Georgia in their commercial. Yeah, I'd, like I said, I didn't want to hear from him. And the University of North Carolina uses our peach on the sideline to call plays. I'm not really sure what Is that's that right? all about. Yeah, that's but we appreciate that additional. That's market. good. But I appreciate what you do and also uh, the, your, uh, uh, your tourism department within, too. And uh, can I ask a question? Uh, how many of the, uh, the Tourism Investment Act uh, have you given out? I mean, how many have applied? Because you've only done two, right? Two or three? The, we only want Kevin. We've done one in the senator's district. <laughs> it was outstanding, and uh, you know, great water park, which is what we're looking that, to try to right. find and uh, incentivize. Thank uh, you for that too. Tourism opportunities and and, and uh, parts of the state that uh, could benefit from that as well. And that's the one that has gotten approved and going forward. It seems like there are there's two. two. I'm, I'm surprised that more haven't applied for that. Well, and we've we've had some applications. What we've tried to do, Senator, is also work with folks on the front no, end. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, to help pre-screen with our partners sure. at DCA, uh, and and there have been a number of folks that have come from hotels in particular, and and as you know, that it's a hotel with a conference center is eligible. Yeah. It is a discretionary grant. Right. A discretionary program and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find things like great water parks great <laughs> tourism assets like that yeah. that we can work with and so we're trying to work on the front end with a lot of folks giving them guidance before they go through the formal application process. yeah i thought about donning my speedo and going into water park but uh, i decided <laughs> probably shouldn't but look thank you for what you do and we do so much more for less and uh, i appreciate you guys thank making you, it work. our tourism team is absolutely, absolutely. fantastic thank you I'll, I'll wrap up because I know we, it's, it, we'll talk about uh, uh, the, the one change, but let me just say entertainment has been huge in the state, as you all know, $6 billion uh, of an economic impact in 2015. We had 248 films and television shows shot in our state, uh, $1.7 billion in direct spend, and the industry now is responsible for nearly 80,000 jobs in our state, representing $4 billion in wages. And with the launch of the uh, Georgia Film Academy, uh, it's only going to help us as we uh, ha work to fill crew. Uh, and, and going forward, that's going to be huge uh, for our state. And then finally, with the Georgia Council of the Arts, which is, as we've said, if, if what we do with business recruitment is the head, then, then the arts are the soul of who we are, and they do such a great job rounding out our state. One of the main things I want to say is, is that uh, the creative arts industry represents uh, a, tw a $30 billion dollar a year industry in Georgia, and last year we awarded $876,395 to 85 organizations in supporting arts in FY15, uh, and 114 uh, counties uh, that our arts programs and services reached in FY15. And I'll uh, move in very quickly to uh, our amended uh, uh, budget. Uh, it is, uh, you will notice that the one change was uh, for economic outreach in China. What, we've, we've got a question right here sure. before you go. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Representative Gant, I mean, uh, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I wanted to share with, with you that I'm a strong supporter of the arts. I appreciate and applaud your efforts. I know Senator Mullis enjoys and appreciates the arts. I'm a member of the council, I apologize for that. <laughs> As well, and, and I know they won't ask, but I would certainly like to make the request that uh, we increase their funding and, and expand those programs, particularly in some rural areas in this state that don't get as much exposure. And, uh, and then the, the other part, I, I just wanted to ask you to respond to uh, on a different subject, but when you're going around uh, the country and the state and the world talking to business leaders and, um, and, uh, and those who are stakeholders in, in helping grow our economic conditions, what are you hearing in terms of transit? How important is mass transit? I appreciate both uh, questions, Representative Mayo. Let me, let me address the first one, and, and I appreciate the job that that uh, Karen Patey and our department do, but really partnering with uh, organizations around the state. The arts uh, in, in Georgia, is it's a vibrant community, and we appreciate what they do with the resources that they have. One of the things that we did last year, because uh, we had heard uh, uh, Senator Hill and others had come to us saying, look, there's got to be a way that we can support arts, and particularly in rural parts of Georgia, and, and we created through a, a uh, 
uh, a line item of $300,000 last year. We created what's called the Vibrant Communities Grant. And what it, uh, it did is it made a grant eligible to the 136 counties that did not receive funding in the previous round of, of grant funding in, in 15 <coughs> or a partner grant. So as a result of that, we had 109 applications, 94 grants awarded to 63 different counties. The maximum grant request was $5,000, match requirement was 50%, and uh, we, we spent a little bit over the $300,000 to, to make sure that we do have that reach because it is vitally important. And when we're recruiting companies, you got to make the business case that Georgia is the right place to be, and, and we certainly do that in many, many cases. But you also need to show that whatever community you, that you're looking at, it's a great place to live. I mean, your employees have to have something else to do when they're not working. And that's where bringing in arts and tourism is critically important. So we, we appreciate what they do and, and, and uh, want to continue to support them in any way that we can. As we travel if, if, through our travels and also just working with um, developers and with companies, there is no question that you hear that transit is important in decisions that companies are making on where they're locating, particularly from a headquarters uh, relocation standpoint. And we have seen that. Uh, as one of the factors that Mercedes had is, is they made a decision to move from New Jersey to Atlanta. And we hear that other, uh, in, in other cases as well. We've heard from developers that oftentimes they're looking on transit lines uh, and that sort of thing. Millennials, it, it appears to be an issue to, for a workforce issue for a lot of companies. So you certainly hear that issue come up. Uh, any other questions? Well, you, you're not through. Go ahead. Finish. <laughs> I, I was just going to finish, Madam Chair, with the uh, $650,000 for our activities and our efforts in China. Uh, as the committee knows, we have an office in Qingdao. It opened in 2011. We've had an office there, and, and it has been successful. But we have uh, put a, uh, additional resources and, and effort into our China uh, activities because of the importance and the size of that market and the opportunities that we have. So that money will go to promote Georgia to Chinese companies as a location for investment and job creation. <clears throat> it will be to uh, generate qualified leads, and those are leads defined as qualified companies with the potential for commercial or industrial investment in, the U in uh, Georgia within the next 24 to 36 months. We're going to work to develop projects, uh, working uh, lead uh, with lead companies and developing project parameters, including timelines for the location, uh, business plans for the Georgia market, uh, and plans to uh, visit locations in Georgia. Uh, we will also represent Georgia in the business and economic development community in China, also with Georgia companies that are looking to do business or draw companies uh, to their community as well. It will also go to marketing, trade shows, and international and in-country travel expenses uh, to office rent and to offer some tourism assistance uh, working with tour operators as well. And I thank you very much for allowing us to, to present today. Well, uh, and I ask you a question, and you might want, I was sort of concerned that, you know, we're up in a new China office and the economy of, of China's, you know, sort of going down the tubes right now. Yeah. <laughs> and could you sort of explain sure. to me uh, yes, why you think it's a good thing to just move yes, forward? I thought it was a good explanation. Well, and, 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 and overall, it, you know, we, we have had some success in China, and we think we can have more. And, and the reason for that is the assets that we have in this state, whether it's the port, <clears throat> the airport, the uh, institutions of higher education, technical colleges, you name it, th that's a big draw to any company, but particularly to, to Chinese companies. And so we needed to make that investment. We had invested in 2011. The global markets are definitely uncertain, to say the least. And what we ha understand from uh, folks that uh, are, are working in, in around the world, but particularly in China, is that with the uncertainty in that Chinese market, these private companies are looking for a safe haven to go to. And one of the safest havens they have is, is North America. And if you're going to come to North America, you're probably going to look in the southeastern U.S. And when you're in the southeastern U.S., we want you to be in Georgia. And we appreciate the resources that it will take. China is a huge market. And those that have traveled there have seen that firsthand as well. And uh, we, uh, we want to make sure that we have the assets and the resources to allow us to travel there. It's a relationship business, particularly in China. It's very relationship-oriented. Uh, and we, if those companies are looking at different markets to locate, we want them to look at our state. Any for, thank you. Thank Any you, other questions? Thank you for the job you're doing. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Appreciate it. Thank you all very much for y'all's support. I think we're Please running a, a little ahead of schedule. <laughs> truck and, um, guys by the door. I, I, yeah. 
Yeah, Austin, would, Austin yeah. can go get it. Yeah, tell them they don't want their budget cut. They need to get it. Exactly. They were, they no, they're trying to tell Austin what, what to do. He but, but, huh? <laughs> works for us right now. Okay. Thank you for calling them. Here they are. Try to beat the ice back home. Yeah. All right. If you don't mind, we'll just start early. We're a little early. Uh, it's good to have you too, Commissioner. Thank you. I'm, my, it's all my honor. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No, never mind. My, he's been over there. My dad's in there. He's been working with him. No, but I'm good. I'm good with it. Whatever you want to do. He's been over in the spreadsheet and all that kind of stuff. Thank you, Commissioner. And if you'd like to introduce your your staff that's with you today. Yes, uh, I'm here with Mr. Terry Pritchard, our physical officer, our Deborah Flanagan, our executive director, and Bill Edge, our information officer. I knew Bill when he had dark hair. <laughs> I thought I was say when you work down here. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. right. what I had more hair. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and present, okay. please. I know this is a little early, but we've got some bad weather coming in, and, and I, I no, we're happy to do it. Bill had mentioned that you were running ahead and said, "Why don't you come on down?" Yeah, uh, we're we're here. I, it's a pleasure to be here. We are requesting no change for the uh, budget. Uh, we're expecting our one of our busiest years ever. We have a George Power rate case, an IRP, the merger with AGL, Vogel hearings, and the Clean Power Plan implementation to just highlight some of it. So it's going to be a very busy year. We've got some uh, opinions about 17, but we're not here to talk about that today, and I'm here to answer any questions. So. Yeah, you're, you're working you, with you, them. You, on the IT, would you like to? I mean, that's mostly for 17. Mostly for 17. We've uh, got a little time. Are we got you, time. No, you ready to go? Is it bad weather where you live? Yeah, but I'm mean, Okay, I'll, no. I'll, we I'll can, be glad to talk for a minute. Give me a minute, time. okay. You push my button, I'll talk. Oh, all right. <laughs> okay, thank you, sir. <laughs> right. Thank you, Madam Chair and uh, Commissioner. Um, yeah, I'll just give you an update. Um, I met with the the um, PSC's IT staff last session and then talked over the last session, and we met uh, a few weeks ago and they did take the money we gave them last year which is about half of what we uh, they asked for but they used it pretty well and replaced their most critical equipment and they're having the same challenge that a lot of our state agencies have which is that IT salaries are a lot higher than what um, what state government jobs pay but I think within that constraint they're working pretty well and we talked about their plans for fiscal year 17 which I guess we will talk about next time we get together but anyway I think they're doing a good job Thank you, Representative. Thank, yeah, uh, yeah. thank you. Any other questions? If we have no other questions, this meeting is adjourned, and thank you for coming. Thank you. Well done, man. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We want to give our best to the rest of the year, guys. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs>